So I was actually at D23 in 2015 when John Favreau came out on stage and released the first look of this film. Now, mind you, this was the same panel that was releasing new information, clips, and trailers for The Force Awakens, Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, uh, the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. So this was not a slow news day by any stretch of the imagination. And the one thing that everybody was the most excited by was the Jungle Book. John Favreau said everything that you're going to see in this movie is completely shot on a soundstage in Los Angeles. I'm sorry, what? You know, if not for the fact that there are talking animals who are speaking in English the entire time, I would have believed that they would have shot all of this practically. I mean, it looks that amazing. It's that good. You guys should just go just to see that and be like, oh my god, we have come so far. Another thing that really uh, surprised me about this movie is how much they lean in to being self-referential because these live action remakes have really tried to kind of shy away from being shot for shot remakes of the animated films. I think to their detriment just because that's why I'm going to go see these movies. I'd like to see more of what I loved in those animated films. For example, in Cinderella, the entire time I was like, there's not one single reason why this should not be a musical. In uh, Alice in Wonderland, I was like, I get that they're taking a lot more from the books. Unfortunately, I would have liked a lot more from what was distilled into uh, the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland. What's up, man? Why is he always fucking thirsty every time I start talking? I think one of the things this movie definitely improves upon is actually introducing actual conflict. In the original version, Shere Khan and Mowgli, they don't really get to meet until the very, very end of the movie. The danger, you know, the conflict is just sort of like implied throughout most of the movie. It's like, you gotta get out of the jungle, kid. Shere Khan is coming back. Well, who the hell is Shere Khan? He's a tiger. He's crazy. He's nuts. He wants to eat you. And he's like, whatever. I'm hanging out with my bear friend. Tell Shere Khan that he can come find me. Whatever. Idris Elba was just perfectly cast as Shere Khan. The original Shere Khan was voiced by George Sanders. The man's voice was just dripping with sophistication and yet this undercurrent of menace. Idris Elba, his voice is sort of the flip reverse of that. There is this underlying sophistication so that way you know that this is a person who is completely methodical and thorough and knows exactly what he needs to do in order to hunt and get what he wants and it's brilliant it's beautiful it's perfect oh my god and the other cast is brilliant as well i mean bill murray as blue holy shit dude that is the other reason why everybody else must absolutely see this movie but i'm helping blue get ready for hibernation bears don't hibernate in a jungle not full hibernation but i nap a lot i will say this though there were moments where i thought that some of the bits and some of the jokes were going just a tad too long but to be quite honest if i was editing this movie i don't think it would have ever occurred to me to think you know what this movie needs just a little less bill murray i think the reason why it stick out to me so much is just because the movie does a really great job of making sure that the story is moving along at a good steady pace and ben kingsley as bagheera i mean his voice was just the perfect mix of that soft-spoken authority, but at the same time, we had that sort of dry sense of humor that really came through with uh, a hint of sarcasm. I would really, really love to see Ben Kingsley and Bill Murray in a, in a comedy together. If it has already happened, please somebody direct me to that movie. Another thing that this movie does really well is sort of giving Mowgli uh, an actual story arc because in the original, Mowgli is a plot device. I like how he has a story arc and it's always centered around him accepting who he is because he does feel uh, isolated and excluded from the rest of his pack because he isn't a wolf. He's a man cub. It's like, yes, Mowgli, be a character for once in your damn life. Be someone. The one thing I can say that I didn't really love, I can't say that I didn't like it, but I didn't love it. And that was Christopher Walken as King Louie. Here's the problem with King Louie. It was done perfectly the first time around. You had Louis Prima play King Louie. It, it doesn't get better than that. So whenever I'm there sitting in the theater, hearing Christopher Walken be that character and start singing that song, it was kind of like, ooh, all right, I don't hate it. I just don't love it the way that I did the original, which is a rough spot to be in just because it's like, Nothing is ever going to compare to that. You can't really top perfection. You just can't. But I think that kind of speaks to how good the rest of the movie is. When everything is just hitting, 
nines and tens. And when you've got something that is just kind of like an 8.5, 8.75, it's like, oh, all right, you kind of stick out and just, just, just a smidge. One of the things I really liked about this movie is how they weren't afraid to make their villainous characters legitimately scary. Uh, there were moments when I thought like Shere Khan might actually start like eating small wolf cubs. And I was like, if he eats an effing wolf cub, I am out of here because I'm sorry. Those wolf cubs looked a little too much like my own dog. And I was like, if, if this happens, I'm out of here. I'm done. Goodbye. Ka is like massive. Ka is about the size of several buses lined up <laughs> one right after the other, uh, which was a bit horrifying. And that's probably my only like little warning about this whole movie. I'm told that I'm a grown person. And if that's true, then if even I was scared, then I would say, watch out for your, your, your scaredy cat children. But you know, they're your kids, traumatize them as you see fit. All in all, this is a good, solid movie. It's technologically and visually impressive. The performances are entertaining and fun, it's exciting. And at the same time, you really do walk away feeling like you did see a full, complete story as opposed to just a bunch of spectacle. If you're a fan of the old movie, there's nothing in here that is just like offensive or egregious where you're just like, well, this is bullshit. In my mind, this is probably the best of the live action remakes that Disney has made thus far. You know, Disney cracked the code all those years ago. They realized that the old classics, you know, those old stories could be reinterpreted, you know, using music, using animation. It's interesting to see uh, an interpretation of an interpretation, but at the end of the day, it's worth the ticket price, definitely. What's up, man? I feel like you just put a bomb under my seat. Yeah, so let me know what you think. So like, comment below, subscribe, do whatever it is that you feel the need to do. And I will talk to you guys later. Okay, love you, bye.